Welcome back, Forks fans. It's Rob the Fork Explorer, and I'm here today with Endless Space 2 Penumbra, which is really exciting because this is the expansion that we've all had a say in. All the people that have gone on Amplitude Studios' forums and have voted for various aspects of this expansion. It's just really exciting to kind of finally see it come to fruition. So there are a lot of things to talk about. Let's dive right in. First of all, there's two main mechanics of this expansion that have changed, or main features, I should say, of this expansion that we should focus on. First of all, the Umbral Choir, who are the race that we have basically picked pick together, like all these various traits and and voted on all of them and have made them who they are now. And so who the Umbral Choir are, are obviously like a very dark, gaseous, weird umbral choir beings <laughs> like i don't know what to say they're shadowy figures but they're very cool looking um they are the uh, they start as a democracy so that's important to know their main faction affinity is called in the shadows which means they possess a single hidden home system located on a special node that can be migrated to other special nodes for a cost they cannot colonize systems in the normal fashion but they are able to place hidden sanctuaries on planets they can abduct sleeper agents from enemy populations to bring them back to the home system as enhanced populations, and they are immune to influence conversion, So, they're, but their ships can be attacked in Cold War even when on their home system. So, very, very unique. Incredibly unique. In fact, I think it's really cool for those that are also familiar with Endless Legends' new expansion called Symbiosis, that Amp Amplitude Studios has, has done this, like, uh, dual faction... Uh, where they both are only like single city, single system factions. And it's, it's just really cool because uh, they play really tall and they're both very unique and they play very unique uh, from each other even. So it's, it's just really cool. So let's talk about their empire traits. They first get a pretty big manpower, uh, you know, debuff, I should say. They get negative 75% food to manpower on systems, so that definitely stunts their growth quite a bit. They are dark matter manipulators, so they get plus 0.5 manpower from idle bandwidth when on Empire. They have an organic network, which means they get plus one maximum hacking operation on Empire. They're fledgling traders, which means their, uh, their trade value sucks, negative 50%. They're twitch infiltrators, which means they get plus 10 hacking speed on Empire. They are ghosts, which means all their ships, except the big-ass obliterators and juggernauts, are cloaked. They are exploited sleepers, which means they get plus one bandwidth per sleeper on Empire. We'll talk more about that here in a bit. In fact, a lot of these espionage terms we'll talk about here in a minute. They both have a titanium mine and a hyperium source on their starting system, so you get that going really quickly. They have expensive taste, so there is 100% addition to their luxury cost on Empire. And then their starting research topics are xenobiology, planetary la landscaping. And then they have haymakers, which is their assimilation trait, um, which we won't really need, you know. From assimilation, uh, they get plus 25% food and plus 25% food. Okay, yeah, plus 25% food on ecstatic and happy. So, with all that being said, that is the Umbral Choir. They sound pretty awesome. Their, their intro video is amazing. I don't want to spoil that for you, so I didn't I didn't I purposely didn't record that. But their voiceover work is also very good. Sounds very uh, like it would just say deep and as you'd expect, a gaseous, weird, uh, like super alien life form to be. So I like it a lot. It's well it's well done. Let's talk about the hacking stuff. So first of all, this was my original starting location. As you can see, it looks super unique. That's because they have these like weird crescents that they uh, they inhabit on special nodes. So this special node is clearly, what is it? Uh, it's a collapsing star. It gives me plus 50, which is just huge. Plus 50 influence, which has obviously uh, led to me, led me to having quite a bit of influence. But these guys, they colonize these special nodes and they then send basically they hack inhabitable planet systems and then start sanctuaries. <laughs> I hope this is I'm trying to make this as easy to understand as possible. So what happens? 
is you go through your new your your economy scan, your trade scan, or whatever you call it, and you start hacking operations from any of your systems that you own. In this case, when I first started, I started hacking operations from this particular system, and you can hack systems that you can a either inhabit, b that are other special nodes, c are minor factions, d are pirate layers, or e are other factions uh, systems. So <laughs> I don't know why I want the letters there, but it, it happened. So basically any special system you can hack and each system that you hack has a variety of options based on what kind of system it is. So I sent my first hack to this system here, which was an inhabitable system for me. So it actually led for me to uh, establish a sanctuary here. So I have a sanctuary here. I don't have any people here because I'm not sending any of my population to this destination just yet. I'm actually sending them to this place. So I've got one population here and I used to have two but I converted one of those people to a sleeper because the Horatio actually colonized this system. So now I have this sanctuary, this hidden sanctuary on a in a Horatio system and I have a sleeper cell, sleeper, sleeper unit here, sleeper population. And what sleepers do, if we'll come back out, talk about sleepers. The more you have, the more you siphon from these people. So like in this case, I only have one, but when I get to five, I will be siphoning 10% of the Horatio's dust, 10% of their strategic resources and 10% of their luxury resources. At 10, it's 20% of their dust, 15% strategic, 15% luxury. And at 20, it would be 30% dust, 20% structure, strategic, and 20% luxury. And you can actually set up sleepers. I mean, like if there's a various amount of different factions surrounding me and I've got sleepers, I can have sleepers on everybody, every other faction. So these can, I can be siphoning all those resources from, you know, every faction on the map. If I had, you know, 20... 20 or even five from every every faction so a very powerful tool for these guys because they have to make up for a bit because they're not they're not colonizing other systems like the other other factions are they do get fidzy from their sanctuaries so i have a person here i have one population unit here they gain this fids here but the sleeper cells also help I'm pulling dust. I would be pulling dust. I will be pulling dust and stuff and strategic resources from the Horatio once I get five on their system here. So, that being said, when I hack special nodes like this one, and I have, I've got a hacking operation currently being uh, carried out, they become transmigration beacons. And what that means, as you can look in the lower left, is that let's let's say that my home system got found out like they find my home system or I just want to move I can set these beacons up and then instantly migrate my home system to this node so I have to wait until it's complete completely set so as you can see in the lower left it's fully charged in 11 turns but once that those 11 turns are up it basically just moves my home system if I do it before those 11 turns are up, as you can see, I suffer a penalty of quite a bit. Uh, the 6, uh, 33 or 50% of my bandwidth and 73% of my population and improvements we've lost if I did it right now. But if I wait until the 11 turns are up, I, it'll be a regular migration. I'll just move there and there will be no consequences. So. That's good for when you get found out. So let's say eventually when uh, the Horatio start to deploy um, anti-cloaking devices and stuff, they'll be able to see my home system eventually and my new ships. And so I might want to move. Here's another special node. So I might move my, my home system to this node and I'll be like out of the way or this one here. So it's a, it's a pretty clever mechanic. It's, it allows for me to migrate instantly uh, for various reasons and, and you know it, it also could be just a strategic move because I wanted to make you know maybe I want to make my home system out here where no one will bother me so that 
that being said, there's also so much more too. So if I go ahead and hack this, we're gonna go ahead and play a few turns because I my hacking is going on right now is through to Deki, which is the minor system here, and then to Zaycor, which is to the Horatio's homes or yeah, actually it's their home system. So let's play through those to those turns, get to that point, and you can start to see what our options are. One thing I wanted to mention too is that when you have the sanctuary set up, you actually have to determine where your population is destined to go. So like I said, I don't have this set as a destination right now. They are all set to, to Oyad right now. So until I change this destination, that destination, none of the other sanctuaries that I have will gain population. So right now, the only reason I'm specializing here is because I want to have... A, I want to have units here to become sleepers as the Horatio, maybe, uh, you know, add more people to the system, but also because it was a pretty good system. So I was just trying to uh, send my, my units there to reap the Fidzy bonuses and stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and start ending some turns here. Looks like, yeah, it looks like I found another special node somewhere. Uh, another one here. Yeah, somewhere. Oh, no, it's up here. Wow. A lot of special nodes in the area, so. All right. So, like I said, we're just going to keep playing through some of these turns. And the the uh, scout ships that we have, first of all, the Unrequired do start with two scout ships, which is fantastic because it allows them to really rapidly explore their surroundings and start getting a feel for what's going on. But they're also very fast too. They're much faster than normal normal scouting ships, so it really gives you an early advantage to figuring out what's going on around you and to get a good feel for for the general landscape of things. Um, should be close to here we go. Let's finish that. But we should be close here. So we're two turns away from Decky. Looks like they've actually got a yeah they they. There's likely to they have triggered and I haven't I've my hacking operations triggered an intrusion alert So they're likely tracing me and they may respond when the tracing completes so they may end up blocking my My hacking attempt. We'll see We can include so this is another thing that we can also do as far as our uh, hacking goes we can use offensive programs which like this uh, piggyback I can uh, I can do piggybacking onto this, which will reduce the bandwidth by, what is it, 30%? I believe it's 30%. Yeah, so negative 30% bandwidth costs on hacking program. So this one would cost negative 30%. So there we go. Once we get there, it will reduce my hacking bandwidth. All right. Let's keep going so that I can show you what the options are once you finally get to the hacking because we've only got a few more turns before that hacking operation, that first hacking operation is complete. Um, keep going with that. Uh, let's do negative two movement points for now because I don't really care that much. And then let's make a choice. Let's do plus one random tech. All right, I wish that you would actually know what the random tech is. You have to go through and look. I know that's a uh, a request that's been made a few times. Let's see what random tech I got. Uh, it looks like I got buyout, maybe. No. I think it was this one, actually, because I don't remember doing that. No. I don't know. In fact, it may be that I have to wait a couple turns. I forgot. Moving on. So, we're one turn away from hacking Decky here, which is great. So, we're going to see. I'm going to be able to show you what happens when you do hack them. Unless they rebuff it, which would suck. Nope, I did successfully hack it. So, let's talk about what our options are with minor factions. So, you can create a backdoor. So, backdoors allow new hacking operations to originate from the node that you're on right now. So, I can start to uh, hack from this node, which will help me maybe attack the Horatio a little bit faster. I can improve my image, which basically is the same thing as using influence to, um, you know, to... Oh, sorry. It would be the same way as if I'm praising them with my influence. Um, 
Impersonate ambassador. It reduces by five the minor civilization's relations with its suzerain. Uh, maybe right now the Horatio are the uh, the major faction in charge of these guys, and I could impersonate the ambassador and make things worse for them. I can uncover secrets, which allows a negative fifty percent praise or bribe action cost, which means I can just you know just obliterate them with some praise and use a bunch of influence to take them out. Or I can hack their economy and increase their yield by 75% for normal resources and 50% for strategic and luxuries. So it says the minor civilization will grant relation rewards even when at war or a neutral relationship. So these are all good things, right? Um, I personally, I like to create back doors a lot, especially when in a situation where I can now use that back door to hit Horatio pretty hard and we'll have to show up the, the next turn or two, whatever it's, Oh, it's four turns. Wow. When, when you start really hammering the, the other major factions, it's, it's important to have a back door close to them, but I also am interested in maybe improving my image because I also want to maybe have that system or put a sanctuary there. So Right now, I'm going to create a backdoor. Even though improving image is normally what I would do, I already have a couple sanctuaries, and I'm not really... The population gain is slow, so I've created now a backdoor, which means, again, I can use this place as a hacking start. So I'll hack this place again. Oh, I don't, I don't think I can hack them twice, can I? No, I can't hack the same spot twice. So, but now I can actually, uh, let's say... Let's do, let's hack from here to this and create your operation is passing through one or more of your back doors. So if a trace reaches the system they are on, they will be detected and might be destroyed by defensive program afterwards. Okay. Um, wow, I, I didn't really, I've, I've never seen that before. So I guess that's something new, but what? that will do for me is once I get that I can set up another uh, transmigration beacon here so but now it's great because I can use this system as a hacking operation origination point so it's important to have backdoors but you don't need too many because clearly like I don't want to have like I mean backdoors are important but I don't need to make everything a backdoor it would be just as important for me especially in the beginning to improve my image so that I can get the minor faction under my control, which is what happened here. This used to be a minor faction. I improved my image to the point where I gained this system from them. Uh, the Umbral Choir are unique in that they never have any other population type other than the Umbral Choir. So the minor system became mine. It did not. I did not inherit any of their population units. So. We'll go through. We're going to go ahead and knock out to that one turn where we can show you what hacking a major faction does. Now, uh, if you guys have seen my Endless Legend Symbiosis uh, video, my overview video, then you would know that I said that they were kind of a slow burn, and it's very similar with these guys, actually. I think any one city faction generally is a slow burn the cultist being somewhat of an exception because the cultists can be very powerful very quickly because their military units are so powerful but the uh Mykara and endless legend symbiosis and now the umbral choir here in endless space 2 penumbra are both slow burns to a degree they they definitely take a while to get up and going um there's another population unit here, so I'm starting to gain quite a bit of food, which is great because I need more food for more people. I'm creating more people. Actually, let's better here. I'm creating additional population units every six turns. The more food I've got, the better that's going to be. So I might just pop this out real quick. All right, so let's also see if there's somewhere else I can go. I got the shuttle here. Let's just uh yeah i will leave him here there's nowhere else to go with that guy and we're gonna go ahead and set some probes out here i've already done that looks like i got some probe lines but let's see if i can find any more systems that i haven't found yet and then 
we're going to go and use this guy here to send out some more probes. See if we can find any more systems. And lastly, okay, those guys are already ready to go. So let's go ahead and in turn, and hopefully I can show you the faction at hacking operation. Here we go. So I have now uh, hacked. Sorry, let's come back out. Oh, pep scale accelerator is great. Your offensiveness drives Horatio to anger and distraction. Yeah, see, I'm at war, it sounds like. <laughs> They're very, they don't like that very much. Uh, I don't know what they're mad about, but I imagine it's probably that, that I hacked them. It's weird to me that they even know I exist because I'm like, I mean, my home system is not visible to them and none of my ships are visible to them. Um, you so, have offended the most perfect. Yeah, but why are you As mad at me? Ratio, we are most vexed. Okay, so, all right, whatever. Anyway, so that being said, I have now hacked the major faction known as the Horatio. Some people say they're perfect, and I will tell you that I am not a big fan of the Horatio, so I'd love to do some nasty little things to them. So what we can do is infiltrate their scanners, which grants vision on all of our fleets for 10 turns. One population will become an unwitting sleeper for your cause on the system. They will give you vision and economic bonuses until they are killed. Topple government. I can topple. I can cause anarchy and change the government of the other empire. Force the system's politics to change to a selected political party. I can scramble their navigation, prevent all fleet movement for five turns. I can also wound the system's hero. I can support revolutionaries using the population of the system to spawn pirate invasion fleets. Force the target to use a unique detrimental ground play, ground battle play as defense on the system for five turns. And then I can server ID duplication, which allows me to steal a technology creating a hit back, hidden back door which allows for new hacking operations from this node and grants increased hacking speed on neighboring nodes lastly i can abduct sleepers one of your sleepers in this empire system will be removed and one unit of population will become an umbral shadow on hd so i don't think i have any um i don't think i have any sleepers here So the, the best thing for me, I think, is either, for me, I believe stealing technology is great. Abducting sleepers would be cool. One of your systems, one of your sleepers in this empire systems. Oh, okay. So that's actually everywhere. I didn't realize that it wasn't just the system. So I can abduct my sleeper. So that would mean that this guy down here has been abducted. And... I would obtain a new population unit down here. So he's plus, yeah, this is the, uh, um, I didn't realize that you could get it from, I've, I've always thought it was just from the system that you hacked, but I guess when you use that particular option, it's from any system that you've hacked. So what's great is that now this umbral shadow becomes, that's what they're called here, here you get the Umbral Choir, but the Umbral Shadows are better, basically. They're better in every way. They get plus two bandwidth from X-Sleepers. They get plus two science. They get plus two bandwidth. And then they get plus two planet uh, physics exploration. So um, they consume more food, but they're obviously like super units. So they're great. Um, and that's what this, this faction is really focused on, is creating these sleepers and then basically bring them back. Um, that's a big way to increase your production and mess with other factions. Um, but it's also, it's about using these hacking operations to make just about everything you do easier. Whether it's with pirate layer interaction, because once you can hack the pirate layers, you can totally screw them up and mess with them. Um, or with when it comes to minor faction, you can make them your friends much easier. Uh, let's just go ahead and praise the crap out of these guys because I got a lot of influence here. So, yeah, that's what hacking is all about. Uh, I wish I had a pirate layer here to show you, but it's very similar. Um, you can basically steal some of their resources or make their, their capabilities less. Or you can make their um, pirate marks cost less. But... Yeah, the hacking operations are fantastic. They're a lot of fun. 
And with the Emerald Choir, they really mess up other factions. And it's a lot of fun to just like sub subvert, subversively like just ruin people. <laughs> and at the same time, you know, expand yourself in ways that are very shadowy. So let's take a look at the hero because I think the hero looks awesome. Faso Staccato. Um, we can take a look at their skills real quick. This is the skill tree for the Umbral Choir. As you can see, you can gain 10, or you, originally you can gain 5 and then 10 bandwidth on Empire with this skill. Uh, then they get Invasion on Fleet. Then they have Overclock Scanners giving Vision Rage on Fleet and 5% uh, in Industry. Down here you get additional bandwidth and hacking speed increases. Here you get anti-cloaking level to 3 on fleet, which is big was big once everybody starts getting cloaking. And then plus 1% Fidzy per sleeper on system. It's pretty big too. So those are the skills for Umbral Choir. And then he's got the uh, normal hero ones. And then he's also a counselor as well. So very good stuff. All around, very good stuff. I'm really enjoying this expansion. It is extremely unique, and the gameplay for the Emerald Choir is so... It feels like a different game in a lot of ways because they're just so different. And uh, and I think a lot of people are going to enjoy them a lot. So hopefully this has been a great overview, a fantastic overview. <laughs> I hope that's what you think, but maybe not. But if not, please leave a question, comment, concern, or anything you have in the comments below. I'll happily address it, either through a written answer or I can make another video to show you what's going on but this would hopefully give you like an idea of what the Penumbra expansion is all about instead of having to watch uh, very long videos you can watch a 20-25 minute video on what the 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 basics of the expansion are certainly there's a lot more to this there's a lot new a lot of new technologies in fact anything in red you can see here are new hacking technologies um, there's some here. So anything in the red is also has to do with cloaking too. So you'll see a lot of that. There's just various new technologies. Uh, there's none over here, I believe. There's some, there might be one or two over on this side. Nope, I don't see any of them. But yeah, so there's new technologies in regards to these new gameplay mechanics. And, you know, there's just a lot that you can do with all of it. So... I'm really excited for you guys all to get a chance to play it very soon here. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. I will do my best to answer all of them. Thank you for watching. If you guys want to see anything in particular from anything that I've ever done, just let me know. But until then, and until the next video, thanks for watching. Keep exploring, guys.